Greetings once again my brothers and sisters. I'm here again uh, by the grace of the almighty father of creation. Yours truly, Chrissy B. Motep. Uh, you know, we spoke previously about the early musicians of Jamaica and we said we we're going to continue uh, with some more. Uh, we know the last time we spoke about the initiation of ska music and before ska rhythm and blues which the Jamaicans were adapting from America and you know today we want to speak more about you know what happened in the 60s after ska uh, we had a, a genre called Rock Steady uh, in Jamaica the Rock Steady was based on a one drop uh, the drummer by the name of Winston Grennan uh, said that he invented something called a one drop on the third beat of the, the bar of four because you know music is measured in bars of fours and in African music African music of the diasporas as well as the motherland the emphasis is on the second beat and the fourth beat of the bar of four so the beats are much firmer and stronger on the second beat of four on the fourth beat of four so you have one two three four one two three four one two three four so it's a two and a four the two and a four so the one two three four one two three four and so on you know in funk music james brown and i've mentioned this many times over the years funk music is not really the emphasis is on the two and a four because what james brown did he changed the beat uh from the in an orthodox two and a four and he had his musicians play firm on the first beat of the bar four so in funk you have one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and so on and so forth you see anyway so we're gonna go back to Jamaica <laughs> it's just an, an example I was given in Jamaican music what happened was in the 1966 I've heard many stories that in, in research that the Jamaicans wanted a slower pace of music so they wanted the musicians to slow down the pace from ska into a slower beat of music but Jamaica is a very hot country and so the dance goers and the people who went to the sound system dances you know we spoke about sound system last week we went to the sound system dances we're demanding that they, w they wanted something a lot slower now and so the musicians were coming out of ska anyway naturally Jamaican music musicians are creative and inventive and they're always trying to conjure up something new and something different so naturally the Jamaican musicians out of ska were coming slower but it wasn't really official until when the likes of Roy Shirley and Hopton Lewis went in the studios and couldn't sing to us an upbeat ska, you know, tempo. So they had to ask the respective musicians. In Roy Shirley's case, he was recording for Joel Gibbs. Uh, Joel Gibbs had just got into production at that time. This is 1966. Roy Shirley said that one day he was walking down the road and he said he saw an army band and he heard the army band and he said he liked the, the, the way the army band was this particular army band was played so he said when he goes into the studio next he's going to speak to the musicians and speak to the producer which was Joel Gibbs at the time about what he heard and so he went into the studio Joel Gibbs uh, at the time didn't have his own studio so they were going to various other studios at the time uh, King Curry's Federal and, and so on JBC was another studio and so on and he said that he wanted uh, to, to, to the musicians to replicate what he heard the army band playing. So he actually hummed it, what he heard the army band playing to the musicians in the studio. And naturally, Roy Shirley steeped in soul traditions. One of his favorite singers is Sam Cooke, another one is Otis Redding. <coughs> Excuse me. And so coming out of Scar, it had to be slower. So he, gave, he pinpointed that, you know what, I can't seem to have an upbeat Scar rhythm you've got to slow it down so here it is i heard the army band this particular army band playing this note or playing this number recently so please can you replicate this and so it went on a treat the musicians in the studio joel gibbs actually uh managed to really slow the music down and to fit roy shirley's style and roy shirley's mood and there you have one of the first songs of rock steady uh which was hold them other titles have done this feel good hold them hold them feel good feel good and so on it's a classic show, classic song over at federal this is where it gets very interesting because 
some say the very first rock steady song was done at federal by Opton Lewis take it easy and so Opton Lewis uh, like Roy Shirley he was steeped in solid editions and he couldn't sing the sky it was hard for him because he's a slower he's more of a sentimental man more of a balladeer if you like and so he went into federal and he asked Winston Blake for producer and the musicians there at, at federal which is run by King Curry uh, right, was the first man to own a studio in Jamaica and so and Bob Marley actually bought them the studio in 1978 and it was Tough Gong Studios and we named it Tough Gong but actually initially it was King Curry's Federal anyway Bob Toulouse went to the studio and he, he said to the, the to the men in the studio the musicians that I cannot sing to this beat you've got to slow it down can you kindly slow the, the, you know, the beat of the music down and then they came up with a rock steady half scar half rock steady song. Well, they say it's the first rock steady song, but it still had it maintained elements of scar in its afterbeat. Because if you listen to rock steady, you can go to YouTube and go online and type in Optimus Take It Easy, and you can still hear the afterbeat of scar, but you can hear the firmer beat of rock steady transparent. So he sung that song, it was the number one song, number one hit in the island. So it was. Roy Shirley's uh, take as well, which we spoke about earlier, which was hold them. Some title have some places have it down as feel good, but really the official title was hold them. And so those were the two amongst the two first rock steady songs coming out of Skia. You also had out to out to Ellis at Treasure Isle, backed by Tom McCook and the Supersonics, um, when he sung Girl of Got a Date, which is also 1966. But like the other two songs we just mentioned, Girl of Got a Date retains elements of Skia in its afterbeat. So those are the three contenders as being amongst the first Rocksteady songs, coming out of Skia and going into Rocksteady. You can hear, you can see that the beats were weren't fully Skia. There, there was a change taking place, and so the one drop which was initiated by Winston Grenin took place. Uh, Winston Grenin was also a drummer. As I mentioned before, he drummed for people like Cox and Dodd. He drummed for people like Drew Creed. He, he worked at Federal Studios, World Studios, which was run by Edward Siaga in the early days until before he became a prime minister or went into politics. And so Hugh Malcolm was also a drummer. Well, Hugh Malcolm worked for Joe Gibbs. And Hugh Malcolm said that uh, he was the first one to drum, uh, to insert, insert the, 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 the R drop on a third beat of the part. The hard drop is really called a one drop. So you've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The beats are still strong on the two and the four, but the emphasis on the third beat took precedence when you Malcolm, you Malcolm said it was him and also Winston Grenin said it was him introduced the one drop on the third beat of the bar four and they come out a scar because scar is a very up tempo beat as i mentioned the other day dumba 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 coming out of rhythm and blues from america so the music the musicians in 66 as i said winston grenon and new malcolm the two drummers saying that they both inserted one drops in, into their respective uh, bands when they were performing rock city numbers so who malcolm played on hold them uh Roy shirley uh, joe gibbs and also you Mal uh winston grennan worked at federal for winston blake maritone label when Opton lewis was uh singing take it easy so they both really got the, the credit for introducing the run drop you see and it went it went around the island and all the musicians all the drummers in respective bands at that time were incorporating the one drop on a fur beat of the part of the bar, fur beat of the bar because now this is now a new beat and so the, the beat became known as a rock steady as i said at the scale it's no, long, no longer scale anymore it was now a rock steady and there were different bands and different groups coming around at that time at studio one you had still the soul brothers but then you had another group coming out of the soul brothers called the soul vendors jackie b2 was there in organ but treasure while you had the super sonic said by tommy mccall we spoke about that the last time as well you had the great drummers around that time lloyd nib who worked with the scatterlights early on i believe Lloyd nib also went uh, to follow uh, tommy mccall uh, when he formed the supersonics when he went to drew Creed's. so you can also say lloyd nib a drummer also was part of that one drop revolution as well but he wasn't amongst the first even though he was a boy, he was, I take that back, he was amongst the first, but the very first were the two I mentioned before, Winston Grenon 
and of course you Malcolm so there you had Rock's Teddy a lot of beautiful numbers some say this is the most romantic the era of Jamaican music was some of the sentimental numbers that were coming out of Jamaica at that time and the Roxette was really so profound you know you had some beautiful numbers you know you had people like Slim Smith and Uniques uh, My Conversation beautiful numbers you had numbers from Prince Buster you had numbers from Derek Morgan uh, you had, you had uh, Born to Love You uh, Derek Morgan Derek Harris sorry uh, Born to Love You had The Sensations also that done a, a cover of the same song so the, the era of music between 66 and 68 when Rocksteady was king in Jamaica was a beautiful era and a beautiful period and all because of the change from ska and the one drop and the third beat of the bar by performed by Winston Grenham respectively and of course Hugh Malcolm and then later on Lloyd Nibb and so on then in 1968, late 1968, you had another sound coming out of Rocksteady. And this is where it all gets, can get very confusing because the genre was called reggae. We all know it's reggae music. Even it's not, you've got a reggae and then you've got umbrellas underneath it like ska, Rocksteady, rhythm and blues. But, so everything has been called reggae, but really it isn't reggae. Reggae was a sound where the Jamaicans were playing between 68 and 1970. So coming out of Rock City now, there's a new sound which is organ based and organ dominated. And this is where the likes of Jackie Jackson, uh, a bass player, was great because his bass lines when he was playing for the Supersonics uh, to Treasure Island, he left from the Supersonics and went to work with Clancy Eccles, his dynamic band. You know, dyna dyna some say dynamic, some say dynamites. I always call it dynamic, uh, which is the backing man at Clancy Eccles, is true though. And actual fact, Clancy Eccles used to use Drew Creese Treasure Art Studios as well to, perform, uh, to, to, to you know, record his material and to, and to, you know, produce his material as well, you see. And so, at the same time, you had Clancy Eccles there, you, you had Jackie Jackson on bass, you had Winston Wright on organ, yeah. You had the hippie, you had another group called the Hippie Boys, which featured the great Barrett Brothers on the rhythm section, Carlton Barrett, you know, on drums and Aston Family Man Barrett on bass. They went on to, as you know, to back Bob Marley in the Whalers uh, when Bob Marley became an international icon in the 70s. But they were there working for Lee Perry as well as the Hippie Boys. They worked as the, as the Hippie Boys and then they also worked as the Upsetters for Lee Perry in the same rhythm section, drum and bass there. They had uh, other people like Skyler Scott, Styles Scott. Styles Scott was a guitarist as well. Uh, Jackie Jackson uh, uh, was, was a bass. I mean, uh, the, the shift out of Rocksteady into reggae was done about, some say, by Jackie Me Too, because Jackie Me Too, what he did, he changed the organ, ba organ patterns out of Rocksteady into reggae. Reggae, Rocksteady, is, is, as I said, is done on a one drop and a third beat. It was a more firmer beat. Rocksteady is, a, is like a, a jing, a jing, a jing, a jing, a jing. The jing also you, rock steady sounds also because it's also dominated by bass as well uh jackie jackson was also responsible for that at treasure Isle. so too is jackie me too in the organ uh, at, uh, at, uh, at studio one wally cameron was also another hung sung hung hero because he also played bass at studio one on the soul vendors you see and also on some of the sound dimension uh, numbers, because well, sound dimension and soul vendors was a rock steady. And then out of when 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 the jam was changed, they morphed into the soul dimension. You see, and so Jackie Mitu changed the organ on uh, that song by Larry Lanvin called Nanny Goat. You see, so you can hear the do 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 do. That's a change from rock steady's uh, a jeng a jeng. Jing or sometimes do 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 that's like rocks that's like take it easy Elton Lewis you know do 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 in, in do 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 drop on the fur beat. With reggae it was more ju 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 As some of them say I love you 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 do 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 do
do do do reggae 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 <laughs> it's a pattern it's so obvious and it's so simple it's like a pattern it, it kind of whispers reggae that's what the reggae sound sounded like and but they got the name of reggae it wasn't from the pattern itself it's from a prostitute in those days in Jamaica the prostitute in those days in Jamaica were called Shreggae. So they were saying that we can't call this new beat Shreggae. Some people wanted to call it Shreggae, yeah, but they said, no, we can't call it because that's, that's derogative. Yeah, no, that's, that's like the, the same name we give to a, a prostitute woman. We can't call it Shreggae because it's a music, it's, it's a beat, so we've got to call it. So, okay, then so someone said, why don't I call it a Reggae? But Toots and Maytors done a song for Baron Lee called Do The Reggae and Toots said it was the first time that anybody called reggae and record and he said he gave the name of the genre by that of course by doing that song called Let's Do The Reggae he said one day he was in the studio of a group of friends and apparently he said to his group of friends come let's do the reggae and then he just the name just sort of called on and it just sort of stuck and he said I'm going to use that for the, for the song I'm going to do and he did a song called do the reggae for Byron Lee in 1968 and he claims that as a very first time that anybody coined the word reggae on record but Clancy Eccles done a song in 1967 uh, 68 I think it was very, very late it was been very late 67 going into 68 I believe that song was came out before the metal song do the reggae talks the metal song do the reggae and Clancy Eccles said that he was amongst the first one to coin it because he said that in that song and it's quite obvious you can hear it in the song he says i'm the boss of this new beat um the, this new reggae beat so that's possibly the first time that somebody would call the name of reggae on song it was entitled the song the song was called uh, my boogaloo my boogaloo clancy echoes no brag no boss it's got two titles the main titles uh no brag no boss but the subtitles got my boogaloo it's clancy echoes check it out on youtube and it's got in, or a line in a song which says I'm the king of this uh, new music of this new reggae beat something along them lines uh, my music is sweet I'm the king of the reggae beat so it could be him who was the first one to, to coin the word of reggae or put the, name, the word of reggae in song but the first reggae title was obviously goes to Toots uh, and the main tours of Do The Reggae which was the actual title of the song in 1968 for Byron Lee I, could, I think Clancy Eccles' song came out just before his song. Then you've got others. You've got, as I said, Nandy Gold. Some say it was the very first reggae song, which Jackie uh, Me Too from Studio One changed the organ because that song was a Studio One production, Larry and Alvin's Nandy Gold. Some say the Bell Tones, which was recorded at Ari J Studio in 68, was also another number one song. It's very interesting that all these defining songs, these seminal songs, became big hits of the year. Uh, 19, you know, in 1966, Take It Easy, Hope To Lose is a number one, so too is Roy Shirley's uh, Hold Them, both were genre defining songs and they changed uh, the, the genre, those songs were, the, were defining changes in the, of, various, of the respective genres, of course those two other songs, Take It Easy by uh, Hope To Lewis and Hold Them by Roy Shirley were the first two songs in that genre and also Girl I Got A Date, probably the third choice I'll tell you this is also number one, number one at Drew Creed Studio and then now in 68 you've got uh, Nanny Goat, Larry Lanvin, number one at Studio One uh, then you've got Bill Toms, Harry J uh, another contender for being the very first reggae song was also number one as well there's another song that they said that was the very first reggae song was um, The Race Fans, Bookie Man yeah, some say that was amongst the first reggae song. Uh, that was fast, jerky sounds. That was a reggae sound in the late 60s. Between 68 and 70, that was a, the prominent sound, you see. Great musicians were mentioned, Jackie Mitu for changing the organ. But I must say, I must tell you this story. A Studio One, Cox Sound, or the baller piece of equipment called the Sound I Mentioned. And he wanted to, because he was trying to change the music out, you know, the, the Jamaicans always experimented. And so he bought this piece of device. It was called the sound I mentioned. And actually it went on to become the name of the, 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 the current group of Studio One. Uh, the sound I mentioned was, but this Echoplex Echo unit was kind of the sound I mentioned. 
and that's where they got the name from for the group. It was taking place at the time at Studio One. It was back in the, the, the songs. Anyway, Coxon buys this piece of device called the Sound I mentioned, and he hooks it up to the guitarist at the time, which is called Eric Freiter. Uh, Eric Freiter's unfortunately passed away a few years ago. It was a guitarist for Studio One. So they got this piece of echo unit and they attached it to um, Eric Freiter's guitar. And what happened was, when Eric Freiter played a note in his guitar, it would set off the, 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 the sound I mentioned device. It would make a chuk 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 sound. So if Eric Freiter played a note on his guitar like that, dun dun, the echo unit would go chuk 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 that sort of sound. And so Coxon said what they did, they complemented it with the other instruments in the studio and they reckon that that's how reggae started. He said, there was this simple piece of device echo unit which they bought to try to enhance the music. They didn't know what they were going to call it because they knew they had to change because you've got to keep evolving as musicians, as engineers, as producers. And he said that he changed it. He said that they, they, they because of the echo uh, effect where it gave whenever the guitarist played a note, Eric Freiter, he said, you know what? We, we could use that. We, that could be a beat. That sounds really, really generic. We're, we're going to change the beat. We're going we're gonna to go with this thing now. And so Jackie Me Too complimented with his organ pattern because he changed the organ pattern around the, with the sound I mentioned. And you've got the great engineer. I've got to give him a mention. You know, Sylvia Morris. Uh, he was really the, one of the greatest engineers of all time. He was working at Studio One at the time. And so he, he kind of had to fix the, the sound to make it sound so good. And the studio, that's why the Studio One sound was so, you know, definitive at that time. Because you had people like Jackie Me Too, uh, you had people like uh, Sylvia Morris, you had the great musicians in the studio. Coxsodo couldn't play a musical note, but he had a good ears for music. And that's why so many great numbers have come from that label. And, because, and also because and also, as well, you've got great uh, changes of gears, gear changes out of Studio One, out of Rocksteady. Now we have reggae, you see. And then it went on for two years. And then after reggae, there was another sound called the skanky sound. According to Bunny Striker Lee, the great Bunny Striker Lee, he reckons that this new music out of reggae, there was two genres in actual fact. The first genre out of reggae was called Popper Top, you know. And then after Popper Top, he said there was a it was called drunk old skank where the there's a more of a lazy creep organ like zoop 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 he says that it came about one day they went to the studio at randy's and somebody played of uh the organ at, Sh at Sh randy's as randy's was the best studio for this type of sound in the early 70s say between 70 and 73 and he said somebody touched the one of the organs at randy's and it, so he went zoop and then he said you know what just like with the reggae sound with the with the dan with the uh, the sound i mentioned that should one this was a replica a replication of what happened at randy's when this particular artist or musician uh, he didn't can't remember who he said it was who touched the organ and it went like that he, whenever he touched the organ it went zzz, zzz, so they started to dance they created a dance to it like like flying wings sort of thing and so he said this called this a drone coast because you know drone goes a bird so it's it's, it's a zzz, zzz, it's like a stop start thing so if you listen to a lot of songs like jimmy cliff the harder they come uh bob marley or the whalers doppy conqueror uh, cherry Bobby, harry donaldson uh john holt you know strange things those are drone coast skank songs because they've got that creepy organ thing going in the background scoop Scoop, 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 It sounds like the record, the re the record is gonna stop, but it doesn't stop. That's why they call it the stop start rhythms of the early seventies. I mean, I can't explain it anywhere else. I mean, that's my interpretation of what I hear or what I get when I hear those sort of songs of the early 70s. So of course, it's back with syncopation and lots of orchestration, drum and bass, guitars, some pianos as well. 
you don't hear a lot of pianos in the early 70s songs but you definitely hear a lot of guitar of course bass and drums and so on and some sax and some horns especially with the dub pieces or the instrumental pieces you hear a lot of that as well but you know and it's just beautiful yeah percussion as well and, and, and organ of course like with the reggae like it's is it is a it's 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 precursor reggae you're hearing the, the organ going in the background zzz, zzz, like bonnie Lee says they touched it and it went back zzz, zzz. So you touch it and then it, it echoes and it falls back and that's what they used to make the rhythms and those that particular area of music called it the 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 the, the drunko sound. Some call it the skanky sounds, drunko skank. Uh, Bunny Lee says it called it was called a drunko because it, this particular musician touched the organ and it it just echoed and went back and he said it's like a flying thing. So they and they invented the dance to it. The dance was like a flying drunko because drunko's a bird, a very very popular bird in the Caribbean, Jamaica. And so they used that, and then so it became really uh, uh, the template for for those rhythms of that time of the early seventies. And of course, Randy's studio was built for that type of sound. It was so, you know, perfect, and it was just it was just so such a such a timely thing for it to take place like that. Anyway, we're gonna pop off now. Thank you very much for listening. We're going to speak some more very very soon. Uh, we're gonna speak about we're going to continue we're going to take it up from where we left off the John Cross sound, skank sound we're going to go into the next drum which was a flying side the flying the flying style the flying the fly side of things the flying symbol style uh zzz, 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 the disco sound of the 70s we'll talk about that next time we'll speak more about the musicians uh and we thank you so much for listening to us and like I said, keep subscribing to us. Uh, Chrissy B. Himotep, C H R I S S Y B I M H O T E P. Chrissy B. Himotep. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and share the, all the videos. We want to see your comments down the bottom as well. Take care. Bless.